away from that. Last week, Wednesday, precisely, the federal government jacked up the electricity tariff for Band A customers. At a press briefing in Abuja on Wednesday, Musli Oseni, who is vice chairman of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, said the increase will see customers pay 225 naira kilowatts per hour, which is going up from the previous 66 naira. Now, he added that the commission has also downgraded some customers from band A to band B due to the electricity distribution company's non-fulfillment of their required hours. According to him, currently there are 800 feeders that are categorized as band A, but it will now be reduced to under 500. This means that 17% now qualify as band A feeders. These feeders only service about 15% of total electricity customers connected to the feeders. Now, for the band A customers, there are those who enjoy electricity uh, supply for upwards of 20 hours per day. All right. Now, like I mentioned before, these band A customers represent 15% of uh, the total 12 million electricity customers in Nigeria. All right, so, but Nigerians are not interpreting this as just a hike in tariff for just band A uh, electricity consumers. It's like it's a general hike in the price of electricity. And so many comments have continued to troll this particular piece of news. But to set the tone for the conversation this afternoon, let us go listen to the Minister of Power himself talk about the many challenges of Nigeria's power sector, which has warranted a hike in the price of electricity. Let's take a quick listen. We'll be back. All right, welcome back. If you're joining us, it's Monday's edition of The Buzz live on Galaxy Television. All right, that was uh, Adebayo Adela, who is the Minister of Power in Nigeria, and he was talking uh, there about the challenges of the electricity transmission companies and the distribution companies in carrying out their duties. Uh, it's quite a longish video. You can go online. It's literally everywhere. He was talking about uh, the obsolete infrastructure, you know, they're using to transmit power, which also is affect, you know, the output. He also talked about how the federal government cannot continue to subsidize electricity because for only the power sector, if the government continues to subsidize, uh, they'll be spending about three trillion naira all right which is a huge chunk of you know uh, our budget and that is just for one sector so nigerians now have to pay for the consumption of their own elect electricity as is done elsewhere he also went on to talk about um the citizens lack of discipline in the consumption of electricity of course you heard him there detailing <laughs> how nigerians leave their acs and their freezers on even when there's nobody in the house and it goes on and on and on quite an interesting discourse now because of these comments made by the minister some people are only calling for his removal and like i mentioned it is a heated debate online as to this issue of on the one hand the minister putting a huge chunk of the blame on the consumers and on the other hand you know this jack up in the price of electricity particularly at a time when nigerians are enjoying absolute darkness all right so the floor is open gentlemen where do we begin? let's start with you already. go ahead you know the first time this young man will come public was when he said they will soon be subsidy and i was like what a way in to electricity. Launch, what a way yeah. to launch yourself into the public domain. Mm. And that has been on. And you know, before, you can sit anywhere and say anything and get away with it. But with social media has changed all of that. You should mind what you say because people will respond. And you know it's cold and you don't see nobody. You only read their views. And the one I now read yesterday that when it's, I just had him now again. The people will leave their deep freezers on. Are we supposed to put up our freezer, which, is supposed, which, which we use to preserve our food? I mean, who does that? 
I think we should introduce problem solving examination before people are appointed public offices. <laughs> because everything is now being, they are now blaming the consumer. What has been our own? Over the years, consistently they've been increasing uh, the cost of power. We're not getting any better. And you have the temerity to now come and say, we put up our freezer. At this time that we now do prepayment uh, pay store, pay, pay. nobody will put on air conditioner and leave the house. Mm. Nobody, except the person is sick in the head. How do you now use that as your reason to justify the increment? It's not right. Not even when we are still dying slowly under the crush of uh, subsidy removal on, on the petroleum products. It's uncalled for. And I refuse to see whatever is the reason for doing this. Mm. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah, the thing that is that um, uh, uh, my first concern is that the hike in, in price is just too dramatic from 60 uh, 66 naira, 66 naira to 225. That's more than 300 percent increase. So even if there's a need for this increase, it should be in stages. Uh, with this kind of increase, you you jolt people's budget out of place. Another thing is the objective or the motivation of this increase. Uh, he didn't impress me when he's trying to blame it on Nigerians. I'm talking about the need for Nigerians to be more disciplined in their use of electricity. But if it's to invite, uh, invite um, interest private investors, so if I invest, I will make money. That's reasonable. Subsidies don't last indefinitely. And I don't believe in subsidies. If the system is working, you have no business subsidizing anything. Uh, so if it will bring investors, investment, investors will uh, help in generation of electricity and possibly distribution and then the economy will thrive because the, the, the cost of producing uh, electricity is just very high for private, doing it privately <clears throat> and it's stagnating the Nigerian economy. So if this all in the end will bring about uh, uh, improved economy, increased employment, then it's all good uh, on the long run. What he's talking about living AC on for days, that might be prevalent in the elite and uh, wasteful circles where he belongs to. But the average Nigerian does <laughs> not do it, Bless cannot you. afford do to that. do it. So let him be, uh, do a little more research before he comes in public so, and just insult Nigerians at will. Before God he comes in, you said something that he said they are bringing in investors. Why if we, that's the motivation, yeah, then, no, then no, it's no, all loud and no, no, no. Why are we putting the cart before the horse? Where are the investors? Must we die before they now come? Why don't you just let them know that, okay, if you come and invest based on your capital outlay, then this can be altered to as high as 300 percent yeah yeah they might that be some, not down slam that on they, us. there might be some jolt therapy sorry sorry to, to let me say this because what they have done now for fmcg's companies the cost of version will go 300 percent up they will pass it to the consumer our purchasing power has been drastically reduced what that means is they will sell less if that happens to a marginally high level, the company will close down. If they close down, there will be increased unemployment. And if that happens, most likely, criminal activity will heighten. Mm. So, so it, it, there's going to be a, a ripple effect. You know, so from this. All right, Chief of Force, uh, let's hear your input on this. I think we've um, obviously um, stated all the, all the angles to the story. Uh, I feel that, I mean, what I read said was um, the economic aspect that I was waiting to, to, to point out. Okay. And that's what he said. And that said, I felt that, uh, you see, when Nigerians get to government, they behave like gods. They, they, they now know more than every other person. And these are the people who were criticizing previous government for hiking price, for this and that. But I've seen what has happened. Today, they got away with petroleum, they got away with um, fuel subsidy removal. 
and they are going to take subsidy from everything. And they are not going to give you anything back. Whatever <laughs> investors anybody is going to bring, see, at the end of the day, it's just going to be um, robbing Peter to pay Paul. And government is just living large. They are not showing us that we are, they are, we are, we are suffering. They are suffering from what we are suffering. Or they are feeling, even if what they are not suffering, they are feeling what, what we are going through. You see, we are, this morning I bought a liter of oil for 659. After queuing? 659. Abi? In May, May 29, they said that the moment they take out subsidy, the, the price will come down. That there will be fuel <coughs> throughout last week, Thursday, to no Wednesday, to go. this morning, no you have to queue yeah. to buy fuel at 659. Nobody has been able to answer that. Now, Nobody is saying that. Think, yes, till this morning, I bought diesel, I bought um, petrol for my children to be able to sleep because oh, of heat wave. Light. Mm. I bought di fuel di petrol till this morning. And that petrol, I bought 7,000 naira. In my life, I never bought petrol 7,000 naira. <coughs> That's for the house. For generator. For generator. Mm. What do I do that for? Now, look at where we are today. Now, we have added electricity to it. And don't forget, Ban A are basically those who are industrial areas. That's a Ban A. I have never seen light in my place for the 10 years now for, let's say, 12 hours light. In a day. In a day. Constant, constantly 12 hours. I've never seen it. Mm. So I am not, I don't know whether I'm in Ban Z. I don't even get Ban at all. Ban <laughs> B. <laughs> so at the end of the day, why are we doing this? Why is government only concerning about what they want to get and not what they are giving to Nigerians? Why is it that the, at, the, at the slightest opportunity government have is to remove the small thing that people benefit from government? Now, I am asking, in Turkey, Turkey's government subsidizes bread. They subsidize bread. Mr. Zukamba says he doesn't believe in subsidy. I don't believe in uh, what palliative. Believe? palliative. I believe in subsidy. Subsidy is what you get. If you have, just like if I'm, if I'm in the bank of the river, all right, I can't really look for water as much as a man that is in the desert. All right? So if water is a problem, the government can help those in the desert and say, okay, you people, you don't have water, but we can find a way to channel water for you. And if we are taking, because we have water, we are taking it more, these people now can also get water and stay alive. But where in everywhere in the world, and I like somebody, you who stay in the U.S., you say they subsidize egg. In the U.S., mm -hmm. you say, come on, that's where you come from. Yeah. Abi? That's not where I come from. Yes, you I come, come from, 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 from this country right it. now. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to make it make sense to a common person. Mm. Because all of this is that we are talking about, we are speaking jargons. They don't understand. We are making it make sense to a common person. That, please, that uh, beverage that you used to buy, by in the next three weeks, if it was uh, because there's no uh, this money, the price go through. This money, we made a joke. We had liters of uh, 15 naira, 20 naira, 100 naira everywhere in the house. And I asked my wife, ah, Your children are not picking money. They said, No, that you cannot buy anything. So those 15, 15 naira, 20 naira, 10 naira have been there for three weeks. Yes. Nobody's Nobody talking about it. So it's a shame that we continue to put so much burden on the naira that the CPN is working so hard. To, 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 show up, to show up. Let me, let me make a point, please. Because each time we blame APC, if we had been under good Lord Jonathan administration, they would have protested. Then they were in opposition. So it was their responsibility, it was their yes. duty to protest, to oppose. If PDP, because they remained in power for so long and got so corrupt and became too bloated, too too lazy and too supine that he cannot oppose is their problem the headache. yeah <laughs> so this government is in admin is, a, is in government and doing the work of governance let the opposition do the opposition is can be in government i, I don't and think also, there's anybody that bring that in into this no, no, you, we, we did we, they would have protest if they had been under pdp who said that you, uh, okay. But the, is, no, the issue, the issue, the issue, the issue is privatization. Mm. You privatized fuel, petrol, and you still set the price. Right.
for petrol. True. What is that? Then you didn't privatize. You, you privatize you or test, or test uh, electricity. You privatize or this test the, uh, electricity. And you, and you set the price for electricity. electricity. So you didn't privatize. So the thing is that we don't know the motivations of the uh, whatever is gingering this increase in price. But there is this trust deficit between the masses and, and the government. government. So people are saying that there's been this deliberate attempt to show up the Naira. And because of the money that will be lost from it, allegedly, they had to uh, compensate by the powers that be had to compensate by increasing the tariff. We don't trust the system. Well, I know that, I know, I would. So now it's the is, same government. But is it not when they price. remove fuel subsidy that Naira knows that? Yes. To the to 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 when they increase the cost of petrol, we were told that it is available. It's not available. It's not. It's not. How do we now believe that the increase in tariff on electricity will lead to availability? How can I pay for that? Next? The problem basically has to do with our inability to expand generation and, of course, the problem with the very archaic in fact, transmission in system. Mm -hmm. That cannot take so much because when they pass it to it, it shuts down. And then it not only that, there is a lot of leakage yes. along the transmission line. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just start thinking outside the box and see that transmission can be improved? Because now they said they do about 10,000 kilo, whatever, and they can carry about 4,000 plus. It's been like that. Why don't we, and every year there's a budget provision. For this, why don't they just channel that fund into that rather than now put it on? Because now it's going to make life a lot more difficult. I'll give you an example of FMCGs. Who, by the time they now see, oh, it's costing us so much to produce the increase their brand, it will not help. The only thing they have achieved, they have created the bragging rights. Somebody want to ask for a lady's hand in marriage, and if I not asking, can you take care of my daughter? He said, yes, I'm on band A. That's the only I can see. They created the band A. No, for see, see, I, 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 we can sit down here and begin to summarize and banter. And, you see, at the end of the day, the government have their own. During uh, um, Buhari administration, Buhari administration has increased tariff on electricity three times without announcing it. Now they have increased the one for band A. When they are beginning to spread it across, nobody will announce it. When you buy what you see, you are just going to shout and go to the social media and say, See, oh, they don't increase them. Nobody is going to announce it again. You see, that is a tactic that they have. But he's made the point. The minister said there will be additional increases in other no, zones. Supposedly. That's yeah. what I'm saying now. Yes. Now, the additional increase. In other it, zones. Yeah. <laughs> In other bands. So for you that is in band C, Z. No, I'm, band I have no band. I have no band at all. <laughs> all right, we're still discussing the increase in electricity tariff. And uh, like I mentioned at the start, a lot of groups, forums, and even individuals have uh, continued to wade into uh, this recent development. For instance, the Northern Elders Forum have uh, actually kicked against uh, the recent increase in electricity tariff in the country. In a statement released by its spokesperson, Abdulaziz Suleiman, the forum described the tariff increase as a reckless move and a complete disregard for the well-being and welfare of the Nigerian people. Of course, According to them, the drastic increase in electricity tariff will have a significant negative impact on the already struggling population, further exacerbating the gap between rich and the poor. And the very Therefore, poor. they urge the federal government to immediately reconsider what they refer to as an ill-conceived decision and consider the dire economic situation faced by the majority 
of Nigerians. Also, uh, Senator Ali Ndume, who is the Senate Chief Whip, has also lent his voice to uh, this recent development. In strong terms, condemned the recent hike in electricity tariff, uh, and in a statement which he released on Saturday, he said the timing for this increase is wrong because Nigerians are yet to recover from the removal of fuel subsidy. Ali Ndume called on the federal government to reconsider its position in the interest of Nigerians, adding that many are facing many challenges, including unprecedented inflation, poor purchasing power, insecurity, and many other hardship. And it goes on and on and on. Also, the pan the pan Yoruba social cultural group called Afeniferi has also condemned the recent hike in electricity tariff, asking the president Bola Metinubu to compel the Ministry of Power to reverse the increase. Uh, the group said the increment amounts to pain for inefficiency and further compounding the country's economic woes, which Nigerians are currently facing. Of all of this, they have threatened the showdown if the federal yeah. government insists on electricity tariff hike. All right, they have told the government to prepare for the consequences of this recent hike, which they described as wicked and unpopular, stressing that since the government preferred to listen to the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, they should be ready to face the consequences. Meanwhile, in response to all of this, the federal government insists on the increase in electricity tariff because according to them the increase will only affect 1.5 million customers nationwide according to the government from the policy formulation perspective the recent increase in tariff for only band a customers is just 15 percent of electricity consumers in nigeria and uh, according to them i mean if you look at it statistically that's just a very minute number of nigerians who will be affected uh, by this they went on to say the government is sensitive to the pains of the people to the sufferings of the people and they are not ready to aggravate this suffering any longer which is why uh they have said it is a journey rather than a destination so for mm. those who can decipher codes all right what this means is along on the journey it's a yeah. Yeah, exactly yeah. thank it's you a for that a process. Did, did, they also, <laughs> did, did they also put timeline to okay those, uh, this, that's what i'm telling you that we are not giving you percentage of increase for other banks they are just telling you over time there will be increase mm. you don't know whether they are going, are going to slam a blanket 240 uh, kilo, uh, kilowatt per hour to everybody but, but, but shouldn't something like this have been debated by the national assembly ostensibly they are, they are the representatives the of the people and, they are and you, you keep imposing this series of hardships on the, on people, the people without any recourse or any concern and that's what I'm saying that so we why, why, why are they keeping quiet should be able it should have, have been debated an independent in the national place. assembly yeah. an independent state as of assembly not an appendage to executive to anybody because at the end of the day what we are sitting here talking about what the Afenifere or Anese uh, uh, all these uh, uh, oh, sub-national organizations mm -hmm. are saying are the things that our people who we elected should be saying, should be, saying, should be telling the government, be look, the people. I have spoken to my people and they say it is too much yeah, that indeed. we cannot bear it. Can you reconsider? Can you set a timeline? It's only in Nigeria that somebody wake up on his inauguration day and say subsidy gone. Yeah, overnight. it's only in Nigeria that somebody will come and tell you a minister will wake up and tell you that why we have increased the this thing is that people leave their TV on. <laughs> is he not supposed to be making so much money for the electricity company? Are they not supposed to be making so much money? Am I not supposed to be going to purchase light every time? Is it and then the increase will not be fifteen percent. Like, hello, it, it will not be forty percent. No, no, it, it will be three hundred and fifty like, percent. Just like Overnight. a telecommunication company coming to say that Nigeria make too much for that's why we increase. <laughs> in, <laughs> well, it doesn't make sense. This um, man, who is the minister of power today, was a deputy governor at 
the CBN. Yeah, the, the question is the kind of. It was also we... a former gubernatorial mm -hmm. candidate. It's supposed to. It's it, supposed it, to be the governor of your state mm -hmm. by now. The, the, is it what it's supposed to be doing? The, the question is the, 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 the kind of the kind of people we elect and appoint to political offices. But it's been evident that since after Dr. Saraki left. The Senate, Next. the National Assembly, Assembly has, been reduced, has been reduced to a, Thank you. a, 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 a rubber stamp parliament. That is entirely, Mr. Yes, that's, that's my opinion. opinion. Yeah, put, that put, me, out there. put me anywhere and anytime. Thank you, Mr. Zukama. Yes. All right, but then be mindful you're using the platform of Galaxy Television yes. as a conveyor of your opinion. So let's stay only on facts thank you so okay. much sir meanwhile for the benefit of the uh, viewers uh, you're wondering who are those who <laughs> are really on this band hey uh before now i too didn't know there was a band you know, you didn't know <laughs> so we are all in the same boat but then for the purposes of clarity according to the nigerian electricity regulatory commission naroc uh, the different categories of electricity service band you know uh have been explained it's online you can go there and get it so band a customers will enjoy a minimum of 20 hours of electricity a day why not 24 20 hours 20 so there's no guarantee day. for 24 mm. hours electricity mm. anyway is that what the they have said they have that is according to the electricity she's commission she's just, she's just no, no, that's what i'm saying that i mean i'm not talking about what she's reporting no, because she's reporting what is uh, uh, no there's an omission mm. 20 to 24, 24 hours <laughs> okay. that's how they stated this okay. minimum of, of 20 space. hours a what day for say, between 20 and 24 hours <laughs> that's how they stated this uh, <laughs> it's minimum of 20 hours a day is what i have <laughs> From what they release, I am not the one to. And, and what is happening in Ghana? Hours. We are not. We are, Anyways, see, the problem that we are having in this country. Band is B too customers, much. we'll come back to you, Chief of Force. <laughs> band B customers will enjoy a minimum of 16 hours of electricity a day. For Band C, it's a minimum of 12 hours per day. Now, Band D gets a minimum of eight hours per day, while Band E gets a minimum or four <laughs> hours per day okay so i'm confused because the entire weekend in my estate we there was no light we didn't get one hour yeah. so what bands yeah, do we belong me. because it no, ends at no, me you're wondering you. what band really are you so, on? Said, let me uh -huh. you. so if i'm on band d i mean that's the least band, band, e. The, band, e. band e the four, four, hour hour, hour, four hour, hours per day four hour per day mm. and i have food stuffs in my deep freezer you expect me to put it up what there is power, Abi? Mm. When you're leaving home. When I'm leaving, so that, so that everything there will get rusty. rusty. I will uh, uh, spoil. <laughs> In the words of uh, Mr. Macaroni, if we say, are we normal? <laughs> <laughs> How can we? No, how, can we how, how can hello. we be normal and our society? Hello, hello. Is how, this how, how can down? a regulatory can agency, in its glory, sit down and say this? I mean, I mean, listen. What I was even thinking was that they are going to classify a state as a ban, like Lagos could be a ban mm. because of our uh, metropolitan mm. nature. Mm. I thought, I thought, listen, that I, make sense. Yes, I thought they could say Abuja is a ban because it's a seat of government. All right. Now, if you cannot go to Akwaibom, you cannot say Uyo is a ban. And then people like Maoro who go to whatever because we have not my brother said we have, they have not seen like that for so many years so but what am i saying in the essence is that look at what a regulatory agency is in a full glory is saying and people in ghana will be laughing people in Benin will be laughing that a, a regulatory agency believe that there is a place in this country that somebody enjoy four hours Only for us four day. hours like a day is it well, really no, Nigeria, Nigeria is a laughing stock. Is it not right? bad enough? Across, across the war, people no, just no, no. laugh at Nigeria. Ban E, only four oh, hours. hours. Ah, in a country that you are increasing light to... Oh, Jesus. Excuse Hello. me. Is it going to be daytime so that um, I mean, welders, artisans, okay, can do can, that. Can make use of they can make use of the four hours. Or, or is, is it going to be by, at night? By uh, 1 a.m. to 4 so that when we are, are, are heat waves to kill us, <laughs> I mean, 
No, this is it, 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 it's all right. We're getting some reactions. Let me read a bit of the co uh, the comments we're getting. Kenneth from Kogi State uh, says, "Why is it that uh, they don't consider the suffering of the poor masses before implementing some of their policies?" People are still battling with the fuel subsidy removal, which has already made life so harsh to Nigerians. Look at the unprofessional statements made by a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Okay. All right. Um, another reaction is here. You know, the same minister, we saw a power banzer. Okay, I cannot read this message on live television. It's toxic. Okay, so yeah, um, keep your language at least, you know, acceptable. You can paraphrase for them. Yes, no, I can't paraphrase uh, something as um, it's toxic. damning as that. <laughs> and that's putting it mildly. Please, I do understand the sentiment of some people, yeah. and you want to put that across. Uh, but there are certain terminologies and terms that are not allowed on television. It's a national TV. So please, let's be mindful of that every time. All right. So according to the Electricity uh, Regulatory Commission, they, are currently, they currently have 800 feeders that are categorized, you know, as band A. Uh, but it will now be reduced to under 500. This means that 17% uh, of the Nigerian population only qualify as band A feeders. And this band A people makes up just 15% of the total electricity consumers connected to the feeders. All right. So if you are not on band A, the recent hike doesn't affect That's you true. for now. All right. But as um, the federal government has also, you, please put it doesn't in, affect you. It affects you. If you're not on band it will, A, it will, include, it will put prices high on commodities. He, that is okay, that is okay, the direct okay, impact. Okay, I get what you mean. Yes, uh, but it doesn't that affect you affect as for how much yeah. you pay for electricity. Your dry cleaner uh -huh. uh -huh. is on band A. Hey, you will start paying you more. You pay now. If the people that are doing noodles, they are doing beverages, uh, are, they, are you not going to pay? You are going to pay because they are not charity organizations. No, they are not. And yeah. MBS will come out and say that oh, our inflationary rate is uh, 32.2. These are the reasons, these are the reasons, these are the reasons. Why is are we not going to have galloping inflation every month in this country when every uh, 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 opportunity for government to make life uh, uh, better for people, they actually draw things out of something that could make you brave? They, they make you, they want to suffocate you. The same president that says, let the poor breathe. We are not breathing anymore. Yeah, but, the, but where is the opposition in this whole thing? We are Nigeria where is opposition. the national assembly in this whole thing? Where are the Zeppo unions in this whole thing? Where is the, the Nigerian really we don't masses even in this whole thing? Again. So everybody is yeah. like folding his arms and wait, and wait, wait. The, what, what is the essence of democracy? Democracy came in the first place because no one man can be trusted with power. So you need uh, the evolution of power, power. Uh, the, the, uh, autonomous so centers be, so of power, can checked, so that right? things can be worked out. So where these other centers of power refuse to function, refuse to act, then it re degenerates into a dictatorship. And that's what we are seeing. This administration can wake up and do anything it's it that they like. And right. nobody says they won't. What I'm going to say is uh, to a large extent, I think the people are exhibiting uncommon understanding. Hmm. And I'm serious. What's uncommon understanding? What I say uncommon Please, understanding. I have to explain that to my understanding. You see, so much media campaign is out there trying to explain where we were and why and where we are trying to go and why the donor has to be rocky and all of that. Perhaps that is why the, the usual protests are not forthcoming. Again, you said it earlier that the PDP, for instance, or maybe Labour Party that should lead the opposition, they are in disarray. Okay? Labour Party of yesterday, they talk of PDP. No, they are in disarray. Yeah. So, and, Labour Party of yesterday. And even the Labour itself, you see, there's a problem now between the Labour Party and the Nigerian mm -hmm. Labour Congress. So, the, the focus has now been shifted from the people so, to power yes. equation within them. And so we are led at the mercy of God Almighty. Are, are, I, I, God I, I, all right, let me, let me make this point. We are led at God Almighty. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. Let me make your own point. Your own point. <laughs> I don't understand. Gentlemen, ten seconds. We please. are not showing any understanding. 
what you are seeing is Stockholm Syndrome. We are worshipping our oppressors. Yes. We are tired of complaining. And when we complain, they don't do anything. So we choose. If you worship one politician and he gives you money, you begin to praise him. All right, thank you, gentlemen. But then I'm not holding forth for the federal, federal government. But let's lay some of their some the issues, the challenges they're having in the power sector on the table, and let's look at them. All right, first of all, our transmission lines, the cables. According to the they're minister, old. if you go and listen to you know the speech he gave at the press conference, he talked about them being really old, really obsolete. Some of those cables were laid in the 60s. You understand? So for now, still using them to transmit electricity is becoming a huge challenge and we all see that happening with the constant collapse uh, of the, the national grid. national, grid. national grid. in three months the national grid has collapsed about so, 47 times so, all right since they transited from nepa to phcm fantastic the grid has collapsed 141 times Patient. all right fantastic. so let's talk about all those issues what would you now advise the government to have done, yes Excuse you know me. in terms of Dealing with this very, very yeah, that, that, that is a very, that is a very important challenge. That is a have. very important challenge mm. that the minister have highlighted. highlighted mm. right? We knew that before. He has highlighted okay. it. See, the common basic knowledge in marketing. The brands don't just do relaunch for relaunch sake. They spend money in doing relaunch. A brand who has, for instance, a beverage. I want to put price. It will do a launch and say, we have added this. We now add price. Now, you have investors. Why are, why are we not seeing the improvement in power? They will not give us price. Mm -hmm. If you have an investor and you put investors, they go get money, change this old cable to new ones. And if I used to have four hours electricity, I start having 12. Whenever you bring the price, I will pay. Mm -hmm. So that I continue to enjoy. Now, you have not changed all those things. You are giving me... That is where the problem is. Okay. You have not improved on all those things, and you are adding prices. Now, tell me, if paying... Give me time like that. If you guys are paying 240 kilowatt per hour, in the next six months, if you were used to have five hours, if you used to have five hours, you have ten. Give me those timelines. Then I will understand. Not coming... Because if all of the things, all the things I see here is commoditization. The, what the government just wants to take, take internally generated revenue, take, take, take. They are not improving on the power. I told you last night, it almost, in fact, I, I sat in my veranda. I didn't sleep in the house. I sat in the veranda. It, it wave was like, ah. So you have not improved on that. You are making people to pay more. So why are you not improving on that first? That's the basic marketing knowledge. Okay. The thing Thank you. is this, in the past, the regional governments had power transmission stations. I think there was not in, one in the north, around North Joss. There was one in Enugu OG area, and then in the west. When the soldiers came, the soldiers believed in centralized order, pyramidal power structure. Mm -hmm. A man gives order and everybody follows. So they started breaking down the powers of the regions and centralized all the generation of power with, at Kainji. Mm -hmm. That's built Kainji. Yeah. So we had one centralized power in power. Kainji Dam. But the civilians have been in power uninterrupted for 25 years. So can't you start with this decentralization of power? Decentralization of power in this context, meaning electricity. Yes. Mm. Okay? You've done nothing about it. The grids or the transmission lines are all weakened. They were built in the system. With the billions of dollars here marked for electricity, generation of electricity, improvement of the system, nothing has happened to this generation uh, uh, system built way back. You, nothing has improved. And you're making excuses. It's lame excuse. It's an excuse of a man that has failed. I just need some kind of... A man. It's some, something to lie to the people. It's the excuse of the politician. It's the excuse of the deceiver. So we are sick and tired of this process. There's so much money pumped into the system. There's so much time lying to have improved on the system. And yet you're still talking about uh, built in the 60s. Those that built those things in the 60s built it from money, from palm canal. Granite, uh, 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 coal, 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 
Now you've had billions, billions of, of dollars money. from oil Petro, money. Petro dollars. Petro dollars. And you've not built you anything. anything. You've and not you're reformed anything. And you're complaining. And you're complaining. Now, Monumental because, nonsense. Because, because <laughs> time is not on our side. One of the issues we had last week was we saw government subsidizing pilgrimage yes. with 90 billion. billion. And at the same time, offer students loan. loan. When you look at national development and the future of any nation, which is more critical, mm. which is more important, which one is uh, with all the pastors, do no matter what pastors we have in this country, we still they subsidize Sorry. to go abroad to go pray. Sorry, <laughs> which one is most to do? And if you look at it from that point, then you know that we have not started. I enjoy that everybody says what we say. Don't ever think that those authorities don't listen. Please, they listen. Just that they don't, most times, they don't act on our offerings. They listen. We will not keep quiet. What is the when labor is not there to speak for us, when the church will not speak for us, the revival faith builders, they won't speak for us. So we can't keep, we are the ones speaking for the people. And to that extent, we will not keep quiet. This is not acceptable. And because now, let me repeat myself, when they were increasing the cost of fuel, they said it would be available. All of weekend, up to from where the last week, came everywhere, everywhere in the yes. yeah. We went to Ibadan. They said fuel there was uh, 640 or 650. We paid 4,000 going. Coming back, they charged us 5,000 naira. I mean, these are not things that make life meaningful mm -hmm. and worthy of living. What do we enjoy as citizens? Give us a break. Make so, our life worth living. Encourage us to stay alive. Yes, because when we get overwhelmed by these things, suicide might be an option. Please. God forbid. Like never be an option. God forbid. Like you always say, Mass suicide in, in this country. Ten seconds, yes, sir. In this, in this country, we we'll continue to ask ourselves a question. When the NEPA, the PSEN was bacchanized, right? The soul is Ikeja Electric, Eco Electric, Ibadan Electric, Potako Electric, Enugu Electric. They collected license fee. Huge amount of money. Where is that money? That money was supposed to use in improving the infrastructure. Where is that money? With the answer, minister has Let me answer your question. Don't go for that. Okay. So much <laughs> has been given by Ten governments seconds. to those people. And we were complaining that you came to buy my second hand car and I'm giving you money to maintain the car. But at the end of the day, we are not any better for it. All right, still a whole lot of issues with our power sector and all over the social media space is a continuous you know, conversation on this issue of electricity uh, tariff hike. First of all, the timing of it is off, according to netizens also. Um, the excuses given by the government are not acceptable to the people. Meanwhile, the electricity distribution companies have directed all Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission to refund customers who were wrongly billed with the new rate. And they've been given till the 11th of April to ensure that these customers are refunded. Also, all these schools are required to immediately post on their websites the shadow of approved band A feeders that have been affected by the rate review. Also, go online. You can Google it. Which areas in Lagos State belong to which band? It's all that information is there, okay? So, um, it is what it is. The federal government is bulging on this recent hike in electricity tariff. <sighs> God help us is a lot for an average Nigerian right now. Many thanks to my guests in the studios today. Thank you, Chief of Force. Meanwhile, we're still waiting for common. The common man. We are leading the protest. Yeah, we need, we need the, act, the activists yes, yes, right yes, now. Really Thank you, Aaron. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Mr. Zukama. You're welcome. Appreciate your coming. Thank you, viewers. Thank you for watching and for participating. Tomorrow, God willing, we'll be here. Even though there's a holiday, we'll be here. God willing. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day and once again happy Eid of Fitri to our Muslim viewers.